Hey, Paul Ramley here, estate planning attorney. In our last video, we talked about part one of this two-part series on the two forms of Louisiana wills. Part one was all about the Olographic Testament. You can watch that video to find out the details about that. This one's for the more common type of will or testament or last will and testament, whatever you want to call it, it's called the notarial testament. Let's jump right in. So two kinds of wills, oligraphic, nota uh, notarial. We covered oligraphic already, but notarials are more common because they're computer generated, they're prepared by lawyers, and these are this is important stuff, so most people go to lawyers to get it right, although lawyers don't always get it right. So uh, let's get jump into number one, the requirements for a notarial testament. So just in advance, know that there's many, many court cases where judges have had to uh, define what's a valid will, what's not a valid will, what's a valid notarial testament, because maybe it was kind of close as to whether the formality requirements are met. So let's jump right in and I'm going to go to the statute in case you need to, uh, you know, really understand the exact words of this. So the notarial testament, has got to be in writing and dated, doesn't have to be typed up, but typically they're, in fact, 99.9% .9 of notarial testaments are typed up and they're done on a computer. So it must be prepared in writing and dated. And, and then this is the requirement for the notarial testament that doesn't fall under one of these exceptions of blind and other things that I'll get into. But again, 99 plus percent of notarial testaments fall under this statute right here, which applies when the testator, the person who's writing the will, knows how to sign his name and to read and is physically able to do both. So they're physically able and they know how to sign their name and read. So if that's the case, and that's the case most of the time, then two uh, requirements must be met. First requirement, in the presence of a notary and two competent witnesses, the testator shall declare or signify to them that the instrument is his testament and shall sign his name at the end of the testament and on each other separate page. So they have to, under number one, they have to declare or signify that it's their will and they have to sign their name at the end of the testament and on each other separate page. Then they have to meet the second requirement, which is in the presence of the testator and each other, the notary and the witnesses shall sign the following declaration or one substantially similar. And the declaration must read, or something similar to, quote, in our presence, the testator has declared or signified that this instrument is his testament and has signed it at the end and on each other's separate page. And in the presence of the testator and each other, we have it hereunto subscribed our names this blank day of blank, 2000 blank. So that's the notary and witnesses must sign the declaration in the presence of the testator and each other. So that's the formality requirements for a notarial tes testament. There's lots of interpretive cases and, and comments. And so um, when it's kind of close or, um, you know, there's a question as to whether the formality requirements are met. Know that there are other forms of notarial testament for p testators who are literate and cited but physically unable to sign. There's other requirements when a testator doesn't know how to read or is physically impaired to the extent that he cannot read. There's another statute for a testator who knows how to and is physically able to read braille. Never done one of those. And there's provisions for a person who has been legally declared physically deaf or deaf and blind and who is able to read sign language, braille, or visual English. So there's just exceptions. And I realize when those circumstances apply, you gotta apply the special provisions, but it's just rare. Okay, so why are notarial testaments used so much more than oligraphic testaments? Well, there's a bunch of reasons. One, um, Notarial testaments are prepared by lawyers. It doesn't have the entirely handwritten requirement. So the notarial testaments, which are typically typed up, they are computer generated. And, uh, you know, so notarial testaments are always done unless you have maybe a, a do it yourselfer who wants to do their own handwritten will. Now, in the notarial testament, because people are coming to lawyers and getting this stu stuff done, the notarial testament is typically more thorough than the oligraphic testament. So things you'll find addressed in the notarial testament, which you often won't find in the kind of handwritten do-it-yourself or oligraphic will, 
is you know you'll see where the tester names an executor and and authorizes the executor to act under the independent executor provisions you'll see the testator waive all the bonding requirements for executors for trustees for use of rectuaries in that notarial testament you'll often find what's called testamentary trust so it makes things easier and avoids the money either being blown or having to be sent to the government in the case where someone is leaving a bequest to a minor, someone is leaving a bequest to an irresponsible heir who's going to blow the money if it's not left in a testamentary trust for them. We'll see testamentary trusts when bequests are made to an heir or in Louisiana called a legatee who is receiving certain government benefits and those benefits need to be protected. And we'll see some testamentary trusts and notarial testaments for people who want to leave an inheritance in the bloodlines, perhaps for longer than, you know, one, than one generation. They wanna see things go to the children, but then passed along to the grandchildren, maybe even the great-grandchildren. And some notarial testaments you see, and this is a Louisiana only thing, you see Louisiana people in notarial testaments sometimes leaving this Louisiana form of ownership called usufruct to their spouse. And when they do that, they'll name naked owners to receive ownership of the asset at the termination of the usufruct. And then also common in notarial testaments, but not common in oligraphic testaments, is you'll see a number of reasonable contingencies covered because oftentimes the family circumstances or even the assets are different when the person dies versus the time when they prepare their testament. So, you know, what if the executor dies? What if uh, a spouse dies or a child dies or someone who's left something? Um, you know, where do things go then? So you'll see a number of those reasonable ten contingencies covered in the notarial testament in case family circumstances change. Testators don't have to come in and uh, redo everything once a uh, family circumstance changes. So there you have it. Went through the requirements for a notarial testament, um, tickle, typical provisions that are found in notarial testaments. Um, if I had to guess, maybe 95% of wills done by Louisiana residents are notarial testaments. Maybe 5% or less are oligraphic testaments, and that's where we cause that's where there's problems, as I described in part one of this two-part series. So, hope this helps get you some of your kind of formality requirement stuff straight in your mind so you can focus in on getting it right, taking care of yourself, taking care of your family the right way, uh, making sure you leave the right legacy to your uh, survivors. Hope that helps. I'm Paul Ramley. Have a great day.